These are my uh, replacement heifers, and uh, they are part of a larger cow-calf operation, and so they've been out on this pasture since the end of May. And I ended up uh, being involved with the uh, Cows Eat Weeds project so that I could get some stock trained on eating Canada thistle, and hopefully that will expand into some of the other weeds that we've had problems with. Um, we're not having a lot of success with spraying, and really hoping to get some weeds under control by sticking with grazing and also hoping that the cows or the, these heifers that are trained will also teach some of the cows and then their calves in uh, 
future generations to eat some blue weeds so that we can keep use of our holistic ranching um, principles that we're trying to apply here. So how have you found the training so far? Have you found it easy, difficult? Yeah, it's easy. Um, usually I only go to the heifer herd once a day, um, but you know, the chores are quite short, so it's pretty easy to go that extra one one time a day. The heifers adapted to it really, really quickly. They just kind of, um, once they realized there were tasty snacks in the bucket, um, they were pretty easy to train. Um, and they were really easy to train to listen to the wind, or sorry, listen to the horn. They, all they could hear was the wind at first, and it took a little bit to get them trained. Um, but once they can hear the horn, they'll just come jogging down for their tasty snack for the day. So, yeah. Good. Yeah. And so they fed some of the things they didn't like to eat, and it would take them a little while to kind of come back and um, circle around and eat them again. Um, which I think is one of the, the hallmarks of the training is to teach them to be a little bit more expansive in their repertoire of things they like to eat. Yeah. So we just watched them with the buckets um, down with, with thistle and flax and from what you had said before they kind of mill around and go from bucket to bucket and they don't rest. But what we saw today was a little bit different, or am I wrong? Like, yeah, they were actually more interested in it today. If it's something that they're not crazy about, they'll just go bucket to bucket to bucket and then come and stand and stare at me and wait for something awesome to be poured out from the truck. And they go back and eat it after I've left, after they're 100% confident that nothing better is going to come. Uh, but today they were pretty interested in it. Um, they didn't like the flax the day that I fed it to them, but they ate it all. But they, they stood there and batted their big brown eyes at me and asked for something better. And, um, and eventually ate it when, when the little kids that were being served broccoli didn't get any Skittles after all. So we <laughs> use mostly um, management intensive grazing, so a lot of strip grazing. Um, everything right now is being strip grazed on alfalfa except for these heifers. I moved them down here just to be in the weeds. Um, I already grazed my my weedy patch, uh, my thistle patch with alfalfa, and they're not quite ready to go back into that. So, um, so everything's strip grazing, so I think that'll work out really well with the weed training as well. We'll be able to hopefully get them in to some of the problem spots uh, in a timely manner in future years so that the weeds can start to decrease being such an issue and we'll hopefully not have to have to spray. It feels like we're spraying unsuccessfully at this point in some certain spots. We've got problems with this field because the highway we're bordered by Spirit River Highway on one side and Briar Ridge Road on the other side and so we get um, whatever the ditch has for, for weeds. Have you noticed in the past, even before all the training, have you noticed them doing any grazing of thistle? Yes, they, uh, at the very start of their grazing season, they, um, I'd say the first five days of grazing, they actually grazed the thistle, um, but it was, you know, in, I would say, early stage two, and so it was a little bit more tender, and they were also going from being in a dry lot to coming out into gray, and they were like... It was like a grazing palooza out here. They were so happy and then their standards started to shift and they only yeah. wanted the best of the best. And um, it was really, really wet. And so we were trying to give them bigger strips so that they didn't beat the paddock up quite so badly. And they picked around the thistle. And then ever since then, they, they just picked around the thistle. Um, actually, the last, just the last couple of paddocks that they were in, um, they ate just a little bit of thistle as well, but I think that might have just been an accident. <laughs> this group of heifers, um, they are heifers that we raised, and um, they were backgrounded elsewhere, and then um, I brought them home in the early spring and just fed them in kind of a dry lot, just um, dry hay, and we turned them out in late May. And so out of this group, we will... Um, select our replacement heifers and then we'll sell the balance as um, hopefully fancy bred heifers and then there'll be some open cattle that'll just go as grazed cattle and so my husband and I own this herd and then the main cow herd is owned by myself and my parents.
So when you market these, will you market them as um, trained thistle I will. Heifers. Yes, I All will. Right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Specialist trained thistle eating heifers. I think they, yes. it's going to command premium. a premium. Absolute yeah. premium. <laughs> I'm, I'm expecting a dime a pound. <laughs>